Hello all, South Carolina artist here. We are doing a simple uh, wiring tutorial. And to start off with, you need a few supplies, D-rings. I have, I get these bags of 100 count D-rings so I can at least wire and hang about 50 paintings. There's also a pack, I get them in packs of 100 yards that hopefully will go with those 50 paintings. I usually have to order more, but I get them in packs and it's very um, economical. You can buy them online. I'm not gonna mention any names. We're not trying to uh, promote any businesses, just to promote wiring and the materials that you need. So this is about 100 yards of, or 100 feet of wire. I like keeping wire that I get into smaller, these containers, I've got plastic containers and these zip little Ziplocs that you can order online or if you have a local art supply store, they can order them for you too. I prefer to buy them in somewhat bulk so you can have them around when you need them. And this again is a 50 pack or a 100 pack of D-rings. They also come with the screws. Other supplies you will need, wire cutters. And if you have soft wood, this is hard wood, so we're going to use a drill. But if you have the soft wood, most canvases are pulled onto the soft balsa wood. So you can usually just use a simple, simple screwdriver. I've got a drill that I use just to get it done more efficiently. So the first thing you want to do is pull out your wire. And I am going to hang this piece landscape style or horizontally. So with it being horizontal, I'm going to measure about an inch to an inch and a half in excess of the piece because I need that extra wire to come out from the actual piece so I can wrap it around the D-ring and have a good little length, a small amount, a small amount of length to give it some hangability. And hangability is means that it will come away from the back, but it will not come over the top of the piece. So I've already drilled one D-ring on. So the key with your D-rings is you do not want them to hang on the outside of your piece because it will look ugly. And what's the point of doing D-rings if you're going to have them show on the outside? So you always hang them or screw them on to your piece on the inside and all you need to do if you notice with this one I've measured it and I put it on the inside and it's it's wonderful because it's got its own little measurement unit right here so all you have to do is just simply put it here I'm using the wrong hand to do this so all you have to do is just simply put it here and let it drop. And when it drops, you know that's enough. You don't want to take it too close to the edge because it will split the wood and you don't want to put it too far in or on too close to the outside of your piece because then it will show on the side when it's hanging and you don't want it to show and that's the whole point of the D-rings. So the simple rule of thumb is to just simply make sure that you have it flush with the side and then you know you can screw. So you want to come down about, with this piece being such a small piece, I have it coming down about an inch, inch and a half, maybe an inch and a quarter. And you can use a measurement, uh, you can use yardsticks or uh, measurement tape, but you also have with you, on you, your own little measurement. You have from your knuckle to your knuckle. Knuckle to knuckle, it tends to be about an inch. My little chubby fingers, I've got an inch right here. So from knuckle to knuckle, that's an inch. And then that's another inch. So going two inches down for this one would be too low. It's almost too low. I brought it right here because I've already pre-measured these. And this is why these have these nice little triangles to give us good little direction. But if you go into the middle or any, any below, any further low or below the midsection, it will not hang flush with the wall. You want all of your paintings to hang right up on the wall. 
any kind of wiring that's too low will cause it to bellow outwards and you don't want it to do that. Another key thing is that when we are wiring, so we've already measured our wire, and when we are wiring, the first one's always the easiest one, right? The first of everything is always easy. So you have your wire. I hope you can see this. And sometimes the wire comes apart. And that's not a good thing. So when the wire comes apart, I'm going to put a black. This will help you to see it better. So when the wire comes apart, it's wire. All you have to do is just twist it back. Just twist it back. You don't need any frayed ends. So just twist it because it's wire. Now I like to make a little hook to hook around the D-ring. So I hook it around the D-ring and I bring it around and there's that extra inch. So you only need really an inch, maybe an inch and a half, not a whole lot, especially for lighter weight pieces. If your piece is heavy within five to 25 pounds, then you will need more wire. So keep in mind, rule of thumb, lightweight pieces, you'd only need an extra inch to an inch and a half of wire in excess of what's going to be hanging. And for heavier pieces, you will need more wiring. So we're going to take this wire and we're going to curl it around. And see, I create that little hook to make it easier because I can only use one hand. So we wire it around and we've already got this little area that I crimped. And there we go. And then you just pull it tight. And now you've got your wire on. Now frame shops will tie a knot. They'll turn it around and tie it like a shoelace knot. Um, I don't do that because I might, once I get it all wired, I might decide that the wire is too tight and I need to loosen it or the wire is too loose and I need to tighten it. So I like to keep it just one loop around and then you take your wire, and if you can see this, you bring it back around to the front. You don't go inside that D-ring again and you're wrapping it nice and tight. So I want you to see this, it's nice and tight. I don't, I don't go upward, don't wrap it like this. Don't wrap it like that. It's ugly. Not only is it ugly, it doesn't hold very well. So even if you have a lightweight piece, it might hold for a while, but it'll start to loosen. So you want to wrap it so you've got it tight with each section that you've wrapped, each little area that you've wrapped. And you see how the, the wire will start to come apart? Just twist it. This is where years of um, working with wire can build up nice little calluses. If you have sensitive fingers, you might want to wear gloves. Um, the gardening gloves have the rubber on them, which I have used in the past when working with a lot of wire because the, uh, the rubber will help stop it from pinching or, or cutting your fingers too much. But it happens and it's okay, they're just little cuts. So we're gonna wrap this around and we keep it nice and tight. And like I said, this is a lightweight piece, so I do not need a lot of wire wrapped. All right, so I want you to see this. See how nice and tight that is? So it's real, it's nice and tight. And when you have this piece hanging up, all you do is you push it down and you wrap it back around. And if you need to crimp it, if you have one of these little flat crimp jobbies, if it hurts your fingers, just flatten it like this. So you see we have a nice, and we can move, our little D-ring can move a little bit, and we have it nice and wrapped. So now we're going to do the other side. Now this is a heavy, a hardwood panel and this is another reason why we have used a drill because this hardwood panel is hard to drill into. So these screws have nice little points on them. Hoping that focuses. Focus. 
has nice little points. It's not focusing very well, sorry. But for hardwoods, you need a better point. So, and I move this over here. See how easy that moves? And that's, you want your D-ring to be able to move. So we're gonna put it, it goes right up above this notch because we already measured, here's an inch. Here's two inches, so it's right, it's about an inch and three quarters for this one. So we're just gonna set this screw right here. Make sure that this can freely move and does not show. And I'm going to hold it so it can be, so I can guide it better. And this is a heavy drill that I just give little light pumps. But I, it's a heavy drill so that way gravity will help it to fall. And see, once it takes hold, I then hold my D-ring, so it's, there we go, nice and tight. I did that really slow, but we can, we have movement of our, to, sorry, of our D-ring. Getting word salads, blah, blah, blah. All right, here we go. So I'm going to pull this in, but I want you to notice this D-ring, you can pull it tight here. But if we pull it too tight, it doesn't really come up. I'm going to turn this around so you can see it. So if it's too tight, it will not come up from the back. And some hanging systems need to come up a little bit. So you don't want it so it's so tight that it doesn't come up. So I'm going to loosen it just a little bit. Now I've got it loose, but I don't want it so loose that it comes up here or hits this wood. So there's a it's just a way of having it tight, not so tight that it doesn't move, but you want it tight so it can move right about here would be fine. And this is why I say don't knot your wire. And you see how much in excess wire, because this is such a small piece on the inside. So when I measured the wire, I measured it across and had excess of an inch, but I have almost an inch here of wood. So it was almost two inches, which is fine. I will use this excess wire later. So I'm going to pull it tight, but I'm going to pull it tight. See, we've got fray. Going to pull it not so tight. I don't want it that tight. And this is where, on our second side, this is where we really want to make sure that we have the right amount of tautness in our wire. So see this, I thought it was tight. It's not tight enough because it's going up into the into the wood and we don't want it to show. The whole key is illusion and as artists, we are illusionist. So I'm pulling it a little tighter so it's right about here, right underneath that. And that'll be nice. Keep in mind that when you pull it, this D-ring will come up, okay? So when the D-ring comes up, you want to make sure that you pull in the opposite direction. So I've got it tight, but with some looseness, so it actually comes up off the piece. All right, so I've got that tightness, and again, we are going to wrap around. And remember, when we wrap around, pull it so it is all in one section all in one section. Never wire your piece where this excess wire goes to the middle. It looks ugly and it's unnecessary and it's wasteful. So always on your second side, you know, the first side's easy. The second side, that's where you need to make sure you have the proper amount of tightness in your wire. I'm trying not to use any technical terms because I want everybody to be able to follow along. So if I have omitted any technical terms, please comment in the section below and let us know. It's okay. We're not offended. We're all creatives. We are all wonderful and beautiful and are out to create the world. So I've got this excess wire. I have pulled it around and around enough and it's nice and it's it's tight here so see it's not even 
it's not even wider than my thumbnail. This is a lightweight piece, so it's not necessary to have that much. So with my wire cutters, I'm going to cut it off just about a centimeter above. I'm going to save this wire for later. It's small, but I might need it in a painting. So when I have excess wire, I just curl it back up. And I have a little container that I keep excess wire pieces in. Old paint bottles and cans are great for using them, with lids especially. So as we said before, excess wire, just push it down and wrap it around. And again, if these, if these little pieces of wire hurt your finger, get your little flat crimper and just flatten that out. Just flatten it out. You don't want any wire showing. You don't want any wire to, to stick out and scratch against the wall. You don't want any wire when shipping to scratch another canvas that might be on top. Although you should use cardboard. Cardboard and pillowcases make great painting separators. So see, our wire comes away from the wall, but enough so it can be tight up against the wall. And that is how you wire a painting. I hope this has been helpful and I hope you have a great and wonderful creative day. There's many things to be inspired about. If you're at home, go outside, breathe in the clean air, be happy to be alive. Have a great day.